Nothing is saying that she got shot. Soon as she sees herself on video with the bikini and the things like that, and it looks bad, she then comes out and says, yo, the narrative of me getting cut by glass, it's just not true. She doesn't point at nobody or anybody or say anything or anything like that. She just says the narrative that whatever came out of me being cut by glass is not true. I was shot in my feet with the intention to harm me and put uh, harm and danger upon me, right? So, okay, cool. Like all of a sudden the affiliates of her circle start pointing like little subliminal fingers, like count your days and like, I won't be around and he's shooting at feet and like little funny things that they start doing. And I'm kind of like, damn, hold on, where are y'all about to take this? Cause y'all told me not to make a statement. So I'm just, I'm trying to figure out where y'all, where y'all taking me to, I don't, I don't get it. So then the, uh, at, at this point she goes, she goes live because people are not really understanding the story or whatever cases. She waits, she doesn't go on, you know, a time when it's just a regular time. For y'all don't, who don't understand, it was one of those things where me and her knew what was going on, but y'all didn't know what was going on. She went live on my birthday with all her jewelry on, da 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 And then she says, yo, you know, um, and the thing about the whole jewelry thing is, is like, she, my bad, she knew that it wasn't a situation where, um, like, she knew she had to do certain sympathetic things, I, I guess, to push the narrative. And I don't know who told her to do certain things like that. And I'm not the one who's trying to like, ever point the finger at anybody. But when it really comes down to it, it's like, you went on live on your birthday and then you said, on my birthday and then you said, I got shot in my foot and it didn't hit no bones or tendons. So everybody's looking at this. And again, the internet is a sick place. This is a place where people don't give a about you. They, they do what they do. They antagonize and they do what they do. Um, you go in and you see you get shot in your foot, no bones or tendons. The internet goes into an uprage because some people are like, hold on, how do you not get shot? How you get shot in your foot and it don't hit no bones or tendons? Like, whoever is watching this, like if you need to go on Google and look at a foot anatomy of bones and skeletons and tendons, you realize there's like 30 bones in your feet and like 100 tendons, some crazy number like that, right? So. She now gets to this place where the people are like, hold on, and, and again, the internet is sick. The internet starts coming at her and saying, yo, show your feet, because we're seeing you at DJ Khaled's house and you're on your tippy toes, and then we're seeing that you're, uh, you know, that you're, 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 you're here and here, and they're antagonizing her. They're, they're, they're brutally coming for her and not giving her, I guess, what it is that she needed. But it gets to this point where now um, she posts a picture of a foot. And she poses this picture of her foot. There's no exit wound. There's, 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 there's a lot of, of inconsistencies in the story. And she says under the post, you see, I got shot in the back of my foot because when I was walking away from the car. There's some things that I just want to say today. I think that they're very important. And I say, um, I know that there's been a lot of speculation about the things that I've been going through and how I've been dealing with them and the insensitivities of just me not like talking when y'all wanted me to talk and saying certain things. And I just felt like I owed my fans, I owed it to my fans and supporters of people who, when they look at me and they look at me as a role model, I owed it to those people as a person to just like give them some sort of transparency and some sort of accountability of certain things. I felt like, um, you know, for those who don't know, for the last three months of my life, I've been in this place where you know, I've been bashed, I've been cut through, just people every single day coming at me, coming at me, coming at me. And it's crazy because the whole thing about it is, is like, when this whole uh, debacle, or whatever you call it, um, came about, the whole time it's like, she knows what happened, I know what happened, and we know that what you're saying and what the alleged things and the alleged accusations of my name is, are not true. It's falsified information, it's false information, and it's not accurate information. I don't ever wanna come off like, I'm here to bash this girl, or I'm here to talk down about this girl, or ever be at a place where like I'm, I'm disrespecting her, because to me, as a person, she's still my friend. No matter what, even if she doesn't look at me like that, I look at her like she's still my friend. And in, in the times that we were together or around each other, we've had nothing but joyous moments and good moments. So I, I'm not gonna sit here and bash her, but at the same time, it's, it comes to a certain standpoint of me as a person where it's like, yo, do y'all want me to just sit here and just allow my name to be assassinated, my character to be assassinated, everything that I worked for to get here to just be assassinated for something that I did not do? 
something that the events that are being said are, are not even accurate and accurately being portrayed to everybody. The narrative that's being created or being created to make me come off like I'm some monster is is now what I'm having to live through for three months straight of just people just coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. Y'all, the streets are on fire with this tea. Tory Lanez might have just blown the lid off the whole game. Word is, Jay-Z and Rock Nation been pulling strings behind the scenes, and Tory's about to spill it all. We're talking big names, big money, and a whole lot of drama. You ready for this? Listen up, cause Jaguar Wright just dropped some bombs about Jay-Z and Rock Nation. She's saying they got their hands all up in Tory Lanez and take off situations. But that ain't even the half of it. Megan Thee Stallion's name keeps coming up, and it's looking like her career might be part of this whole mess too. I'm not here to beg no sympathy from nobody. I've never been one of those people. I'm not a person that's sitting here like, yo, uh, 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 everybody feels sorry for me. I'm like, nah, because at the end of the day, if I did what they're saying I did, then by all means, I would say the same exact thing about me. I say, he doesn't respect females. He's a boy and that deserves no respect, period. I've never been a person that all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's, it's everybody all, all of a sudden like, yo, he, he's this guy who uh, uh, doesn't protect black women and he's this guy who, but it's like, he, he's this guy who doesn't care about black women. That's what the narrative is now switched into and certain things like that. And it's like, hold on, I need y'all to really back this up. When have I not showed out for black women? Every single one of my videos, the lead girl is black. From say it to love to, to now, like when, when have I not showed love to black women? I made I made five chicks tapes about about black love, about a black relationship, about a ghetto relationship at that. Like, you feel me? Like, when did I become this person? Like, my favorite song on the last chicks tape that I put out was Beauty in the Benz. And that was a record that with Snoop Dogg that I loved. And instead of me even being inside of the video, like, like really take me in for a second. Instead of me even being in the video, and this is before all this, instead of me being being in the video. I made the video all about the empowerment of black women. There's nothing but different types of black women in the video, all shapes, sizes, colors, um, um, ages, that just shows the, the, the love in, in, in what I'm doing. And it's like all of a sudden, a narrative comes out with no factual evidence, and all of a sudden, I'm the bad guy. And it's like, yo, I, I, I get it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I, I understand, like, and I support the whole movement of, of protecting black women, but I want to speak on something. And sometimes, you know, I know I'm not always in the right place to speak on things, but this is something that I went through. And so I feel like I'm able to speak on it. I am all for protecting black women. That is something that is the most, one of the most important things that needs to be taken serious and awareness needs to be brought to. Y'all, if this tea is true, it's gonna shake up the music game something fierce. We're talking industry secrets, backroom deals, and maybe even some shady business. The streets are buzzing and everybody's wondering what's gonna come out next. This could change everything we thought we knew about the rap game. You better stay tuned because this story's just getting started. Y'all, let's rewind and break down what really went down that night between Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. This whole mess started back in July, 2020 and it's been nothing but drama ever since. So picture this, it's a hot summer night in Hollywood Hills. Megan, Tori, and a few others are leaving a party at Kylie Jenner's crib. Everything seems cool, right? Wrong. Next thing you know, shots are fired and Megan's bleeding from her feet. Rapper Tori Lanez has been charged with shooting artist Megan Thee Stallion during an argument. The DA's office says Lanez, whose legal name is Daystar Peterson, shot Megan's feet during an argument in the Hollywood Hills July 12th. The 28 year old's year old rather was arrested last night or the night of the shooting, but was released after posting bail. He now faces two felony charges and is set to be arraigned Tuesday in L.A. If convicted, he faces up to 23 years in prison. Now, Megan's side of the story is wild. She says Tori was the one who pulled the trigger. One minute you're partying with Kylie, the next you're dodging bullets. Megan says she was scared for her life, thinking Tori might kill her. There was an argument in the car. <sighs> It was an argument because I was ready to go and everybody else wasn't ready to go. Mm -hmm. But that's like normal friend yes. stuff. Like, yeah. we fuss about silly, silly stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. But... I never put my hands on anybody. I never raised my voice too loud. Like, this was one of them times where it was like, it's, it's crazy. 
translated to right. the way that it did. So I get out the car and it's like everything happens so fast. And all I hear is this man screaming is he said dance and he starts shooting and I'm just like, oh my God. Like he shot a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And I, I so was is so he scared. in the car shooting from the car? Megan? He is he... standing up over the window okay. shooting. Uh -huh. And I didn't even want to move. I didn't want to move too quick. Like, cause I'm like, oh my God, if I take the wrong step, I don't know if he can shoot something that's like super important. I don't know if he could shoot me and kill me. Like, Were you afraid for your life at that I time? I was really scared because I had never been shot at before. But here's where it gets real messy. Right after the shooting, somebody sent a text that said, help, Tori shot Meg. That text became big evidence in the trial. It's like, who sends a text like that if nothing happened, right? Megan's been saying from day one that Tori shot her because he was mad they were arguing. She even said he yelled, dance, B, while he was shooting at her feet. That's some movie type stuff, but Megan swears it's true. But y'all, this is where it gets interesting. Tori's been saying he's innocent this whole time. He says he never shot Megan and that there's more to the story than what we're hearing. And a lot of people are wondering, why is Megan talking about this now? First, let me say hello, Dave, Steph, and Kimberly. It's so nice to be sitting with you guys in Houston. Let me see. I don't know what the water is in Houston, but you've got Beyonce and you've got Megan the Stallion. So you guys are doing something right there. But in answer to your question, why is she talking about it now? As you see, it's been two years. You also see that she is extremely emotional. This is still a lot of pain for her. And I think it is just getting to her, the stories out there that people don't believe her. It is inconceivable to me that we have video, you have a police report, you have a medical report where it said that to this day, guys, she still has bullet fragments in her in her feet, that people don't believe her. And I think it's just getting to her. She wanted to put her own story out there and stand in her truth. And you know, you do so at great risk when you talk in the social media age that we live in today. And as you just said, Gail, we can claim her Houston's own. Did she happen to mention about growing up in Houston, maybe what influenced yeah. her? Oh yes, we tell, said a lot about Houston. You know, you of course know her backstory with her mom and her dad, neither one of them are in, in her life now. Her mom was a rapper. She learned a lot, a lot by watching her and she knew at a very early age, she said, I can do this. I can do this, I wanna do this. She's called Megan the Stallion because she's 5'10". She's very statuesque and she said, in Houston, we are tall, we are shapely and it's a name that she's gone by since 2009. This is not new to her. But she has very fond memories of Houston. As you know, she went back to Texas, got her college degree. She is very much a Texas girl and very proud of where she's come from and what she does and how she does it. Back so much, too. We talked about that, son. Yeah, we, we know you covered so much in this interview. Again, talking more about that rise to fame and how she got to where she is right now. Well, just think about this. Five years ago, she was sitting in a dorm room. You know, if things had gone differently because she was majoring in health administration, at one point she was thinking about being a nurse. Can you imagine Megan the Stallion, the nurse? Yeah, that looked good too. I mean, so it started off in a dorm room and it went from one step to the other. But look at the past couple of years she's had. The Oscars, the Grammys, she did Coachella. I mean, it, it, and when you think about this, she really is truly just getting started and she's only 27. And now we're hearing that Tori's driver might have some new info that could flip this whole case on its head. Word on the street is he's got a different version of events from that night. But here's the thing, we don't know exactly what he's saying yet. It's like the courts are playing keep away with this info. So now everybody's wondering, what does Tori's driver know? And why didn't we hear about this during the trial? It's got people thinking maybe there's more to this story than we thought. And get this, some folks are saying this whole situation might be part of something bigger. Like maybe Tori Tori was set up or something. It sounds crazy, but with all these new claims coming out, people are starting to ask questions. Remember how we were talking about Jay-Z and Rock Nation earlier? Well, some people are trying to connect the dots between what happened to Tori and what's going on in the music industry. They're saying maybe Tori knows something he shouldn't, and that's why all this drama went down. Y'all, we thought we knew the whole story, but Jaguar Wright just blew the lid off this thing. She's out here dropping bombs about Jay-Z and Rock Nation that's got everybody shook. We're talking some serious allegations that go way back and it's making people look at the whole industry different. From the beginning of time we've been taught to be with our own heritage. White man and white woman, white girl and white man, I mean Spanish man, Spanish woman, Indian man, Indian woman. When you guys start making it like a 
put black men down and protect the black women. I'm not saying you guys. I don't mean to make it like, oh, you're attacking. But when we as a whole make it protecting black women means putting black putting down black men, then it comes to a point where it's like, okay, well, who's going to protect black women? Who is supposed to be protecting black women? It has to be black men. It's not the white man. It's not the Spanish man. It's not the man who, it's, it's not none of those. It's not the Chinese man. It's not none of those men. It, it, it is, who is, who is, it's black men. It's black men. And I'm not saying that black men aren't the people who, in, in, in times who aren't the people who uh, inflict certain issues and, and mental issues and certain things that girls go through. Like black men are, are, are very much the cause of a lot of things that, 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 that women go through because of. At the end of the day, like the way we were raised, certain standpoints, maybe we didn't have a parent around, some things, some, some, some things were just not here to, whatever the case is. But at the end of the day, it's like, you gotta remember at the standpoint, if, if, if the man is supposed to be, and I say this loosely, cause I don't want anybody to take this out of context. If the man is supposed to be the, the head and a woman is supposed to be the neck, y'all gotta think about this. In order for the head to move, in order for the head to move left, right, whatever it is doing, it needs the guidance of the neck. It needs the guidance of the woman. In, in order for me to smell and use my five senses on my face, for me to lean in or whatever the case is, I still need to, I still need to use the neck. I still need to be guided by a woman. So regardless, it's like, I don't feel like I should be torn down. If anything, before y'all know the story, like learn the story first, learn the factual parts of the story first, and then come at me and be like, yo, you need to fix this and fix that if that's what you feel like I did. But instead I'm being torn down for a narrative that's like, now I'm the poster boy for, I don't like black women. But anyways, let's get into this. I wanna get into this because it's very important for me to just say this, I'm not here to bash this woman. I'm not here to come down on this woman. I'm not here to disrespect her or throw her under the bus, but it comes to a certain standpoint where I just can't let my character be assassinated for things that are not even really true, like, and, and for falsified narratives and information. Let's start this off. When the original original uh, a report came out and it was a TMZ report about this, that, and the third, and there was gunshots and Kylie Jenner's house and Tory Lanez goes to jail. They gave y'all all the facts of the juice of Tory Lanez going to jail and this, that, and the third, and Megan getting arrested and da, 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 da. Two days after that, I get a call from Rock Nation that says, yo, we heard you're gonna make a statement about what happened and it'd be in your best interest if you don't make that statement. I'm like, Oh, okay, I don't understand what the issue of me telling my fans like, yo, look, it's not that serious of a deal. I went to jail for whatever it's, it's like. I don't get, I didn't get for that two days why that was an is, uh, or issue. Two days later, TMZ report come out. TMZ reports and have the surveillance now. Now they see the video of the arrest. You see Megan, you see me, and you see it's all sprawled out on the ground in, in bathing suits and, and blah, blah, blah. And everything I'm saying is, is public record. You can go back and look at this shit. You can go back and and see it, like, you feel me? So they say, oh, okay, you know, um, the, the, you see her out of the car, she's getting out of the car, she's hopping, it looks bad, bro, and I'm not gonna lie, like, I felt bad watching it because it made her look bad, and it didn't make her look good, it didn't make any of us look good, and I didn't want that for her, I don't see that for anybody. So all of a sudden, when we get arrested, or when it looks like we all got arrested, the memes start. Now I wanna really bring you guys in for a second so you can understand something, and I really just want you to take this in, like, she is a person I spent enough time with her to observe and understand something about her, where it's like, she's going through a lot. She goes through a lot, she deals with a lot on her day-to-day -day basis. And because of that, she's not used to, you know, and not even just because of that, but just because of the fact that she's been praised so much, we've always looked at her as like, yo, that's, that's hip hop sweetheart. Like, she's, she's nice, she's talented, whatever the case is, cool. And because of that, like we've 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 never seen a moment where the memes have come at her, where the memes are like, "Yo, let's laugh at your pain." Ah ha 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 ha! She's never had to deal with that because she's always been praised. So everything that's been happening has been a reaction off of what's been going on. So it gets down to this point now where it's like, now the 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 the, the reports are starting to say, "Okay, well, everyone's pointing to different things." No one really knows what's happened, but nobody has ever said she got shot. So check it. Jaguars saying Jay-Z ain't just a businessman, he's a businessman, and his business might be darker than we ever knew. She's talking about something called eliminations. Yeah, you heard that right, eliminations. Like getting rid of people who might be in the way or know too much. I want you to think about this. 
allegedly, Sean Carter is responsible for enacting Hype Williams to put a Leo on a faulty plane to move her out the way as punishment for rejecting him. And so he could level up Beyonce, who was struggling. Let's just say allegedly that happened. Now I want you to think about 106th and Park with Mary J. Blige. Free, who is a victim of Sean Carter. Mary J. Blige, who is a victim of Sean Combs, are sitting there talking about the death of Aaliyah amongst each other. Think about that. You got a Diddy victim, you got a Jay-Z victim, and you got a superstar gone. They know what happened. And yet, they had to sit there and have that conversation like they didn't know who did it. Think of the power of that moment. Think about Claudia Jordan right now. Claudia Jordan don't ever mention my mother name. She mentioned it yesterday. Talking about why people are afraid to come forward. You mean like you? You was Diddy girl. Corey was Jay-Z girl. Why don't you claim your friend? Claudia. So, Jack, when you say... When I say Corey, I'm talking about Kathy White. Oh, yeah. That's what I was about to ask. Uh, Jay-Z's pregnant mistress who died of an imaginary aneurysm, just like the woman who was best friends with Kim and Kimora who wrote the book, Bling, and died as soon as it made the bestsellers list. Who the f- was these people supposed to go to? You can't go to the boss because the boss is f-ing you. And the boss is boss? Don't get no f- Can't go to the authorities. They're all bought and paid for. You could try to get a special prosecutor, but they'll just pay somebody to reassign him to another case. Where the f*** you go when you get f***ed over by the industry? Nowhere. That's where you go nowhere, which is where people like me step in. You f*** right, I go to Diddy parties. To walk mother f- out! Cause ain't nobody stopping me when I come. So let me ask you, because I look at a, Gabriel Union. And when you mention things like Jay-Z's time is coming for him, then I look at, uh, you know, Beyonce. And I say that, you know, women do have a- That country album and any of you that buy that she a stupid as shit. You don't give it no trap credit. music with God a holster and a hat. But she remade Jolie. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you the song she should have remade. It's a hit. It would have done great for her. She should have tried it on. Tammy Wynette, classic. Stand by your man. Don't act like you don't know that now. But why would Jay-Z do all this? Jaguar's saying it's all about control, keeping his image clean, staying on top of the game, and making sure nobody can touch him. It's like he's playing chess while everybody else is playing checkers. Remember how Tori was on top of his game, dropping hits left and right? Then all of a sudden, boom, this shooting happens, and his whole career goes up in smoke. Jaguar's saying that ain't no coincidence. She's talking about how Rock Nation might have orchestrated this whole thing to take Tori out of the game. Why? Well, that's where Megan comes in. Jaguar's hinting that Rock Nation's got big plans for Megan, and Tori might have been in the way. Singer Megan The Stallion was all business as she arrived to testify in an LA courtroom today. How you feeling today, Megan? Great. 27-year-old Grammy Award winner looked polished in a bright purple pantsuit. Hey, you look great. Megan is a key witness for the prosecution in the trial of a rapper named Tony Lanes, who's charged with shooting her twice in the foot two years ago. It happened after Megan and her friends left a pool party at Kylie Jenner's house. 
Megan spoke with CBS Morning's Gail King about what happened next. So I get out the car and it's like everything happens so fast. And all I hear is this man screaming. Is, he said, dance and he started shooting. And I'm just like, oh my God. Were you afraid for your life at that I time? I was really scared because I had never been shot at before. Prosecutors claim text messages Lane sent to Megan are evidence he's guilty. I genuinely want you to know I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart and I was just too drunk. Should have never happened and I can't change what I did. George McDesian is Lane's lawyer. What do you make of all of this attention given Megan the Stallion's testimony today? That's fine. I will do our job and show the credibility of Megan today. Is it, is it your position that somebody else shot her? Yes. Megan was in tears when she took the stand. She said Lane told her he was on probation and said, don't say anything and I'll give you a million dollars. Outside the courthouse, fans rally to show their support, holding up a We Stand With Megan banner. What is your reason for being here to support Megan? I believe black women when they say that harm has happened to them, and I think it is important for us to stand behind them. Think about it. Since all this went down, Megan's career has been on fire. She's winning awards, doing big collabs, and basically taking over the game. Meanwhile, Tori's locked up for 10 years. It's like a complete 180. And let's talk about Tori Lanez's trial, because it's got more twists than a pretzel factory. People are saying this whole thing was rigged from the jump, and the more we look into it, the crazier it gets. First off, Tori's family and fans have been shouting from the rooftops that this trial was a setup. They're saying Tori never stood a chance, that the deck was stacked against him before he even stepped foot in that courtroom. And you know what? They might be onto something. Some people are saying this is all part of a bigger plan. Remember what we were talking about before, with Jay-Z and Rock Nation? Well, some folks are connecting the dots. They're saying maybe Tori was set up to take the fall, to clear the way for someone else. But let's be real, that's some serious conspiracy theory stuff. We can't just go around accusing people without proof. What we do know is that there's a lot of questions about this trial that ain't been answered. Like, why wasn't Kelsey called to testify? She was there that night. She could have cleared up a lot of this mess, but she stayed quiet and that's got people talking. Now here's where it gets real wild. Some folks are connecting the dots between what happened to Tori and the tragic death of Takeoff. Yeah, you heard that right. There's whispers going around that these ain't just random events. People are saying it's all part of some bigger plan, some industry-wide chess game where artists are just pawns. So who's really coming out on top? The fans are getting all this drama, all this tea to sip on. The media's got headlines for days. But at what point do we step back and ask if all this is really worth it? Y'all, we've been talking about some wild stuff. Jay-Z and Rock Nation pulling strings. Tory Lanez may be getting set up, and Megan Thee Stallion caught in the middle of it all. This ain't just about one shooting, it's about power, control, and who really runs the game.